Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to part two, which is where we're going to set up our X-Touch Mini in preparation for use with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now, you're going to need a piece of software to change the settings on your X-Touch Mini. If you go along to your web browser and just type in X-Touch Mini Editor download and uh, you'll get straight on to the uh, Behringer site. Here we go, X-Touch Mini Editor download. Go to Downloads. and search for the product you're looking for and down here you'll see X-Touch Mini Editor so just I, I won't download it because I've already downloaded it but just click on the download link and download that file that should download a zip file it doesn't take very long now if you, once you've extracted your zip file you can open up your folder and you'll see the execute file for X-Touch Mini Editor. This is the face screen here and you can see it's got general faders, encoders and buttons. Now this piece of equipment was set up for audio so if you look on here you can see these are set to notes C, C sharp, G so and so on now we have to change those settings so that we can let it know that these are actually buttons and not to produce a sine wave for a note here you are you can see them all here on the buttons as well and on the fader control we also have to change the number to a spe specific number so that your PC will recognize that as button press number 10, number 11 and so on. So as you say, if you just work your way through here, change these all over from the type from note to CC this is a bit laborious but once it's done it's done you don't have to do it again so I'm just going to work my way through here changing all the encoders from type note to type CC and then I'm going to give each encoder and encoder button a specific number a button number now the fader in layer A starts at button number 9. So I'm going to start my button encoders. This is on layer A, remember? You've got two layers, layer A and layer B. So on layer, B, on layer A, I'm going to start my first encoder push button as number 10. So it'll be CC10. Then work my way along. So for my first eight encoders, it will be CC10 to CC17. Right, so my on layer A, my fader is going to be CC9. My encoder push buttons, first eight encoders, are going to be CC10 up to CC17. They're the push buttons on the encoders. Then the rotaries themselves I have labelled CC18 to CC25. I will leave a copy of all my designations, CCs and button numbers a link to my um, folder where you can download them from. I'll leave that in the description below.
Once all the encoders are done, you can set your soft keys. So in layer A, my soft keys are going to be row one, are going to be CC26 to CC33. And in row two, it will be CC34 to CC41. So once you've made all these changes to layer A, go to your global tab and click save presets. This will save a copy of these settings to your computer. I'm just going to save it here as layer A. And save. And then you also want to transfer a copy of this to your X-Touch Mini's hardware. And on this tab here, you can export this copy direct to the EEPROM on your hardware. Done. And that is layer A done. So we're going to repeat the process now with layer B. And we just go through the whole thing again. I've set my fader number to 42 on layer B, CC42. Don't forget to change the type to CC, from note to CC. My encoder buttons I have set CC43 to CC50. The rotaries themselves to CC51 to CC58. And then the soft keys, top row CC59 to CC66. And the bottom row CC67 to CC74. And once again, once you've gone through all that, go back to your global tab, save a copy of layer B to your computer, and then export a copy of layer B direct to your X-Touch Mini EEPROM. And that's it. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. In part three, we'll start um, dedicating the buttons to functions in Microsoft Flight Sim using an application called Lorby's Access and O's. So I'll see you in part three. Thanks again. Take care.